Filmmakers, listen up, and especially aspiring filmmakers. Framing a shot is far more important than lighting a shot. Yes, the ideal is you have great framing with dramatic lighting or just great lighting in general, but if you're gonna choose of where to spend your time, make sure the framing's good and the lighting, as long as it's good enough, keep it moving, right? Now, let me really kind of explore this. Um, I'm someone, as an indie filmmaker, I A, like to shoot fast, and by the nature of it, you kind of have to because you don't have a lot of time on a set and so forth. You gotta keep things moving. And so, part of it is that, okay, if you're gonna spend time on anything, what would you rather do? Um, be shooting the movie or be setting up the lighting for each and every shot? Um, and you know, I'm someone who tries to have as naturalistic lighting as possible and you know, use as much as possible the available lighting source um, that I have and then be able to shoot out an entire scene without having to relight for every single shot. Because I can get more shots, I can get more takes, and things of that nature. And it, and it also, just in general, allows me more space for the actors as well as the camera because there's not um, you know, lighting stands and things like that that are blocking certain elements. And the reason why I say framing a shot is more important than lighting a shot is because especially today with the cameras that we have, um, you know, I myself use the Blackmagic um, uh, 4K camera so I can shoot raw and stuff like that, it captures quite a lot of detail. And, you know, as long as the thing looks interesting, and when I say framing, part of that implication is that you're capturing a, a performance. Like what you're getting, um, what you're seeing, helps the narrative of the story, right? You know, so if it's a tough character, you make them look tough in the frame. If they're a weak character, you make them look weak in the frame, okay? And in terms of whatever I've kind of sacrificed in lighting, in many ways, part of my process is to have a stylistic look with the color during the color correction process. You know, um, when, when you do color correction, obviously part of it is, you know, cleaning up everything and getting it to like have a standard, but then you're applying a look to it. You know, the matrix is a good example. It has a green look when they're in the matrix and then it has sort of a blue tone when they're in the real world, okay? So um, in, in those ways, you can utilize a look overall for the movie to, sort of compensate for the lighting that you didn't necessarily get. And again, this is primarily for indie filmmakers. You want to be using your time wisely. You want to be using your money wisely. And so for me, I don't sweat as much the lighting because to me, the framing is more important. Um, you know, how things, like telling the narrative story, um, you know, the, which accounts for the blocking, the performances, and what the audience is seeing you know? And so I just wanted to kind of talk about that just to free you and everyone else up that, no, you don't have to always spend so much time on the lighting. If it's good enough, it'll be forgivable. I mean, you hear filmmakers talk about this all the time that even if a movie is grainy, even, even if a movie isn't necessarily framed well, um, as long as the story and the performances are gripping, a lot of things can be forgiven. And the reason I wanted to do this is because so many people, um, especially when I was kind of starting off and, and, and grew up with, they would spend talk, time talking about like, you know, what cameras they want to use and, you know, this and everything but the story in a way. And I was like, okay, but can we talk about the story and what we're trying to tell? <laughs> so focus on that and framing is a part of that. Lighting is secondary, okay? So um, I just wanted to share that with you and as always I appreciate you thank you and I hope to see you next time